first and foremost, uh, maybe before I even talk about the 15th intake, I just want to share with the viewers that uh, National Youth Service is uh, a government institution um, that is uh, uh, governed by, uh, by or established through an act of parliament, which is Act Number 6 of 2005. And its uh, mandate is to train the youth and they equip them with the necessary skills and knowledge required. So the significance of the 15th intake um, uh, training uh, that is hosted at Andes Bay, just like any other training that we have offered, is to ensure that um, the training is the training is given the necessary uh, uh, support, and, and also not only that, uh, um, it should also be done in line with what NYS is compelled uh, uh, to do as part of their mandate. So mm-hmm. one of the uh, things that we have recorded is that um, um, this is the first uh, biggest impact that NYS has ever trained in the past few years that we have uh, been training the youth. So it's really quite sub- uh, significant in the sense that it's one of the biggest ones, and we are aiming to do the best out of this intake. What are the figures that we are talking about, as you mentioned, the highest intake? Um, this year, we have tried to recruit a total of um, 750, whereas previous intakes, the highest that we have recruited was only 500. So right. that makes it significant, yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, what, what would you say are some key goals and objectives for this year's intake at the Hentis Bay Training Center? Yes, uh, our key objectives um, did not change. Uh, like any other, like I've earlier alluded to, uh, one of it is to ensure that we instill uh, the um, uh, discipline and also a sense of patriotism, sense of nationhood and nation pride to these young people. Uh, we equally ensure that we inculcate that sense of patriotism so that they they have the love for their country and also ensure that they commit to the other um, uh, activities that would be required by a, a, a citizen or a citizen that is uh, that, that really is patriotic. Um, that's what we also ensure that uh, um, this particular training, the 15th intake, should compel to all those values that we have listed, like ensuring that the, the, you know, we, we give them the, the, the sense of, uh, of, 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 of uh, nationhood. We also take them through you know, elements of voluntarism so that they can be able to go out there and exercise the virtues or civic virtues participate in all government projects and so on. So those are some of the key. Mm. So, uh, right, so how does the training curriculum differ this year compared to previous intakes, or is it exactly the same? Not necessarily that. Um, Previously, we were using a a curriculum that was approved some years back. However, last year, we embarked upon... uh, reviewing or uh, or deciding to review the curriculum and we have reviewed it so that it can be able to address the needs and aspirations of these young people the current that's number one and what we have came up is that um, the curriculum the curriculum should not only be responsive to the responsive to the areas that i've just mentioned but moreover to many more other you know, aspects that will help these young people. That they are fully prepared uh, for them to 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 fit in any job market, or if they seek employment, that they can fit in, you know, uh, properly in terms of the skills that we are offering to them. Well, apart from the skills and you know the training that they are getting, are there any other? Uh, is there any other kind of support or resources that is provided to new recruits during uh, their training? Yes, uh, first and foremost, thank you for that question. The recruits are actually this program that we are offering, uh, the National Service Training Program, is for free to all the Namibian youth. And the kind of support that we give is that all the required 
needs uh, are provided to them free of charge. May it be uh, support in terms of their social welfare or support in terms of the needs like psychosocial you know, needs and so on, we do provide them. And we receive support uh, from other institutions like uh, this training in particular is offered in support of other stakeholders like the Namibian Defense Force, the Namibian Correctional Service, the Namibian Police Force. So we receive support from these uh, stakeholders or institutions to ensure that training is uh, uh, training goals are, are achieved. Right. Well, earlier on you talked about patriot patriotism and pride and so on. Uh, how does the National Youth Service uh, training aim to impact the personal and professional development of the participants? Okay, the, uh, on, on, a, on a professional one, we actually offer um, these youth um, with specialized skills. Uh, for example, from this particular training, we offer them skills, life, uh, life skills, mm-hmm. uh, or lifelong skills. We offer them um, very special skills, like uh, skills in weaponry uh, handling or weaponry skills. We offer them community skills, like uh, uh, issues of gender-based violence. We also ensure that these young people are taught civic rights and all that, and be made to understand why they are they should be proud citizens of this country. Right. In, in, in terms of uh, um, uh, personal, it really is very good because the program will ensure that they instill or uplift the current this level of discipline that these young people have. So we continue to ensure that they remain disciplined, they remain uh, young people that are very different, that can handle any situation that may arise in their future prospects. Well, uh, since the inception of uh, this, uh, you know, uh, training service, I'm sure that uh, there are lots of success stories or examples of how previous intakes have, you know, benefited from the national training, the national service training. Are there any that you can share with us at the moment, perhaps one or two? Oh, yes, thank you very much. There are a number of them. Uh, one is that um, when our our youth or recruits graduate from this program, they are absorbed by mostly uh, institutions like those from the security clusters in terms of employment because of the type of training that they undergo. That's number one. They are also equipped to, to an extent that... Um, um, they also start their small little businesses just from that first phase with those little entrepreneurship skills that we give them. They end up uh, uh, establishing their own small businesses. And uh, if I can just outline a little bit, last year uh, when the services were recruiting, that's in terms of um, the security clusters, um, the Namibian police, absorbed a total of close to 200, whereas the Correctional Service uh, took uh, close plus minus 50, and then the uh, the Namibian Police took almost, I mean, the Namibian Defense Force took, um, pardon me, uh, 110 young people. So these are some of the success stories because uh, you will see in a fi- one financial year after graduation, a number of them have been recruited. For example, the last intake, we graduated a total of, uh, we turned a total of 310 and graduated 291. Out of those, almost 70% were absorbed by institutions for them to secure employment. Further to that, we also have programs like uh, the second phase, which is the national, uh, the, the, the voluntary service phase, where we then give opportunity to these young people to go and learn the skills that I was talking about, life skills, other skills that they could not take from the, from, from the training, that they would then should be expected to secure them through the industry out to there. So we attach them to those industries, they will receive those skills. And further to that, we also have the program, a last program called uh, the vocational uh, training part, which is the TIVET program 
those that meet the requirement will automatically be absorbed to go through that and choose a skill that best suits their their, uh, qualification or credentials, and then they pursue that career for them to to further it and graduate. So yes, as we speak now, there are a lot of success stories. Since they are going through the other programs, we have seen those that are doing very well in terms of performance. Some are holding very high rank positions in military, some in other institutions in corporate, you name it. So these are some of the success stories that we 